Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Mark Henry and today we're going to be talking about configuring fast device polling in, NM in NMIS 8 and OP charts. A uh, few bits of, of housekeeping. Uh, we do have a large audience here online today. Um, so everyone's going to be on mute during the presentation. Uh, if you have a, a question, please use the, uh, the GoToWebinar chat feature. Uh, I've been told that uh, some GoToWebinar uh, clients don't show chat. Instead, they show the questions panel. So use whichever, uh, whichever uh, option you have available to yourself. Feel free to ask questions during the presentation. We're happy to address those as we go on. Uh, we will have a dedicated Q&A session at the end uh, of the, uh, the webinar. Uh, we've allowed plenty of time for that. So, you know, if you'd rather hold your question to the end, that's fine too. Uh, please keep in mind the session will be recorded and we're gonna make it available to uh, all of the attendees and the people who, uh, who signed up but weren't able to attend today. So topics, uh, we're gonna talk about how uh, the NMS8 polling policy works, uh, when you might use it. Uh, and we're gonna talk about how to create and assign those polling policies to devices Next, we're going to talk about uh, how Opmantic's OP charts collection and polling definitions enhance and build on uh, NMIS 8's uh, polling policy system. So a little bit about why this is important. Why is it, uh, why is it something you should look at to look at variable speed polling? The idea that some devices you might want to poll um, at kind of an average speed, say five minutes, uh, gather and collect information, do all of your um, uh, all of your thresholding, all of your event creation. Other devices you may not care about, you may want to collect more on every half hour or hour. And other ones you may want to collect every 15 seconds because you're doing some kind of, uh, you're analyzing some kind of performance issue on your network. But when you start looking at the, the ITSM, the IT Service Management Maturity Model, and its levels of performance and value to the organization, variable polling uh, directly feeds into things like initiating problem management, uh, alerting and event management, measuring component availability uh, up and down, setting thresholds, predicting problems, and then measuring and reporting service availability. So this all enhances your ability to deliver uh, high quality service to your organization, uh, whether that's internal or external clients. And of course, uh, with high performance comes uh, greater value for the services that you offer. Uh, today, we're going to be discussing two of Opmantic's uh, product line. The first is going to be uh, uh, NMIS, which is uh, free and open source. It handles all of your core performance and fault monitoring. If you look at the wheel uh, diagram on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see that NMIS sits in the, in the center or the hub of the wheel, and then radiating out from that are uh, Opmantic's commercial solutions, which bolt into, into NMIS. So one of the commercial solutions we're going to be focusing on today is OP charts and how that expands on what you can do with NMIS as far as uh, variable speed polling and high speed polling, as well as the creation of custom dashboards that can be shared throughout, uh, throughout your operators. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's focus in on the NMIS 8 polling policy. And fear not, we're going to be uh, switching back and forth between PowerPoint, uh, NMIS, and, uh, and OP charts as well. So this isn't going to be just a PowerPoint presentation. So really, why is variable speed polling uh, important? <coughs> uh, previous to the release of uh, 863G, you were really stuck with just setting one global collection policy for the entire server. Um, you could do a few things separately. You could collect uh, 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 server services, service status. You could run service checking on a separate uh, a cron job. You could also do thresholding on a different cron job if you wanted to. But your collections all happened on one cron job. And so whatever you set it for for that server, that's when collections ran. <coughs> and really when it comes down to it, uh, and this is something we've heard from from customers for some time now is not everything really needs to be collected all at the same time. So you would have a, you know, if you had a five minute collection policy, if you were collecting once every five minutes, um, the, the server would be running um, constantly for four minutes and, and, and however many seconds, the cron job would kick off and then the load on the server would, would go, would spike because it was communicating out with all of the devices that were under management. 
if you had a, a you know a, a midline server with four virtual CPU, four gigs of RAM, 40 gigs of hard drive, and let's say something less than uh, 500 devices, you were probably doing okay. Uh, as long as your devices were responding well, didn't have a lot of latency, um, and the individual devices weren't overly loaded and could respond to the SNMP uh, walks that were being issued and respond in time, then uh, everything was okay. But once you start loading that server down with uh, with more services that have to be collected, uh, lots more devices, devices that are very slow or very burdened themselves, or devices that are very, very large with a lot of uh, a lot of interfaces to be collected on, um, and so you'd, you'd end up with very, very long polling policies. And so it, it became obvious to, to, to Obmatech um, that it was something that we needed to offer to clients, the ability to assign different polling policies to different devices. So again, it was introduced in, uh, in NMIS uh, 862G. Um, the latest release now is uh, 864. Uh, Options for polling policies are stored in a configuration file uh, called pollingpolicy.nmis. Uh, the default, there uh, we do ship with a default polling policy, and we have, I think, three sample policies in pollingpolicy.nmis. The default policy is actually defined inside the NMIS base code itself, so you can't overwrite it. If you delete pollingpolicy.nmis by accident, uh, the default polling policy will still be there. Uh, it'll, it'll still remain the default. You can't overwrite it. You can't change it. Uh, policies are assigned to nodes individually, and I think that's an, uh, an important thing to uh, to kind of understand is that you can't uh, at this time anyway. You can't uh, grab a group of devices, uh, you know, uh, all devices in this location, all devices assigned to a customer, and automatically through the GUI assign a polling policy. Um, that can be done via script. So it's it's quite trivial to uh, to kind of uh, load up the uh, Enmus nodes list into a into a small script, a bash code or a Perl script, cycle through those, and then adjust the polling policies that are assigned to it. Uh, one thing I, I do really want to point out and make sure that everyone hears this and understands why it happens is that if you change a node's polling policy, Enmus will discard all of the nodes historical data. Everything that are in the RRD files for that device will be wiped away. Uh, the reason for that is an RRD file, a round robin database, um, runs based on the amount of data that has to be stored. So for example, when you add a device to NMIS, uh, NMIS looks at that device, figures out what kind of device it is, figures out how many data points are gonna be collected on the device, and then also looks at the polling policy and NMIS makes a calculation on how big the RRD file needs to be in order to store the data for that, for that device. Once you change the polling policy, you effectively change the size of the RRD file. You either make it larger, you make it smaller. And because you've, you've adjusted the size of the RRD file, um, NMIS can't properly index it. And RRD can't index the file itself properly either and reset all the timing parameters. And so uh, the choice was made internally that if, if once you set a polling policy on a device, that polling policy defines the RD file. If at some point in the future you change the polling policy on that device, NMIS will discard all of that past historical data, create an entire new set of RD files for the device itself and for all the interfaces that are being monitored on that device. Um, and it's important to understand that this really cannot be undone. So we'll talk in a minute. Um, NMIS does back up the old RRD files, but it will clean those up over time. So you, you can roll back if someone accidentally goes in and selects a polling policy and, and wipes out your data. Um, you do have some time to go back in and be able to kind of go through a, re a rename evolution and rename that backed up directory uh, and bring that, uh, that information back. But you'll have to keep in mind that you'll then lose the information that was collected between when you made the change and when you rolled back the change. Uh, the biggest change or, uh, from kind of a, a structural standpoint uh, inside uh, NMIS is that now rather than picking a uh, or setting your polling policy time in a cron job, say five minutes to do a collection, um, NMIS now has a cron job that runs every minute 
You don't have to adjust the time on it. It's supposed to run every minute. Uh, and what it will do, what that policy will do, what that cron job rather will do is it'll wake up, it'll take a look at um, the timing of the polling policies for every device and determine if any devices should be polled at that minute in time. So let's talk about how to create and assign polling policies because that's going to build on what we were just talking about. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to Edmus. And so let's go ahead and I'm going to close out the uh, event log, network, metrics, and health. I'm going to open the polling policy GUI. So I can go system, system configuration, polling policy. Uh, of course, you can edit this file at the command line if you'd prefer to. It's just a, a JSON formatted file. And you can see that we have uh, four polling policies here. And let me see if I can't zoom in a little bit on this, make this a little larger for everyone. Uh, you see that we have four polling policies here. Uh, and Miss actually ships with uh, three of them as examples. Uh, and that would be the, uh, the half hourly, the high speed, low drag, and the very infrequently. To add a new polling policy, simply click add in the top right corner of the window. You'll give it a name. You'll choose how often the ICMP or ping frequency is. The minimum time on uh, in, in the NMIS uh, polling policy is one minute. That's the fastest collection it can do. It can pre-configure to one minute, two, five, 15, 30, one hour, six hours, and one day. So let's set uh, ICMP uh, polling frequency to every two minutes. Uh, SNMP polling, let's set that to Oh, let's say every uh, 15, we want to do that rather infrequently, and WI, WMI polling rather to 15. Um, if this polling policy is assigned to a device that does not support WMI, obviously nothing is going to be collected. Also, if this is assigned to a device that does support WMI, so it's assigned to a Windows device, Windows server, uh, but no WMI credentials are provided, then of course it won't be able to, uh, to collect on that device. A sample polling policy, and there we go. I'm going to hit add, and now we've added this in. You can see that we now have webinar demo policy. I'm going to close this window, and I'm just going to select a device. So how do you assign a polling policy? So I'm going to edit this node. You can see in the uh, in the nodes made window here on the left. The polling policy is set to the default. And what I want to do is I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to scroll down to the advanced options. And you can see right above where model is now, you can see the polling policy. And I can select whatever polling policy I, I want. Again, changing a policy will wipe out that device's data. So you can see, for example, that I have a, a lot of data here in the background. I've got a lot of time on this. I can pick up and blow into one of these and we can go back to, let's see what happens uh, all the way back for the past month. You can see that we've got, uh, we've got quite a few weeks worth of data here. But going back to the edit node panel again, back to the advanced options section, polling policies, and let's shift this to a high speed, low drag. Now I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna hit edit and update node. That's gonna take a minute for it to, uh, to change. We're gonna let that go. While that's updating, let's uh, switch back over to PowerPoint for a minute. So a few notes here uh, on that polling policies GUI. You can add or view existing uh, polling policies, uh, but you can't edit. So you, once you create a polling policy, you can't open the polling policy and change it. Because if you change the parameters of an existing polling policy, you would effectively change the size of the ROD file. 
And so you cannot edit an existing polling policy. If you were to open up the uh, the JSON file, uh, polling-policy.enmis, and edit an existing polling policy, you would corrupt the RRD files for the devices that have that policy assigned to it. So it's very important that you do not manipulate an existing polling policy that is assigned to any devices. Uh, you have a, a picture, a screen cap of the polling policy on the left and on the right, an example of what the RRD file looks like. So you'll see uh, the fields line up pretty well as far as policy name, description, uh, ping, SNMP, WMI, et cetera. All right, let's switch back over to NMIS. All right, we've done a uh, an, an update here. Let's close that window, and I'm going to refresh the Asgard page, the uh, device details window here, and it's trying to draw it. And now you can see that there is no data in any of my charts. So I still have the base collection information down the left-hand side. So all the kind of static stuff, right? The description fields, how many interfaces there are, how many days it's been up, all of that. But the data that drives the charts is now gone. Uh, I was asked uh, uh, earlier today by someone, uh, how do I know which devices have which uh, polling policies? So if you go system, system configuration, and miss nodes, you'll get a list of all the devices on this, uh, on this server. And let me just shrink my uh, window back down to its regular normal 100% view. And you'll see that uh, we now add a new polling policy column. So this column can't be sorted on this view, unfortunately, but you can do a uh, control F in many cases with your browser and search for the polling policy name and move through it. Uh, you'll notice that some devices don't have a polling policy. If they're not explicitly assigned default, they still get uh, the default uh, polling policy is the one that uh, is applied. So you can see that Asgard right here at the top has the, the high speed low drag uh, polling policy assigned to it. So again, um, changing a polling policy discards all your historical data. Uh, that is stored. Uh, so for example, uh, your, your device uh, is stored under database forward slash nodes forward slash uh, the name of the device. So in this case, it would have been Asgard. Um, that uh, directory is then renamed to the name of the device dot policy dash the old policy name dash the timestamp that you had. So uh, it'll be renamed and then uh, a new directory with the, uh, the 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 correct name of the device on it uh, will be created, and then new data will be uh, will be populated into that. Okay. So fast polling with OP charts. So let's talk about what OP charts is first of all. So you have the uh, the base concept of, of NMIS. So uh, NMIS is here. It's doing all of your service monitoring, your SNMP and WMI polling. It's also processing all of your SNMP traps. Um, if you've uh, attended any of our event management pieces, you've probably also seen that uh, OP events will handle all of your syslog pieces. Uh, OP config will uh, collect configurations using CLI data, et cetera. OP charts connects up here. So OP charts sits parallel to NMIS and receives a feed of, of metadata from NMIS. The built-in NMIS uh, polling policies uh, only go down to a fidelity level of one minute. And the reason for that is the way they're controlled by a cron job. Uh, a cron job only goes down to one minute intervals. It'll, it'll fire off once every, uh, once every minute. So if you wanted to do something every 15 seconds, 
you couldn't manage that through a cron job, which is the way the polling policies are, are handled in NMIS. Uh, again, uh, a cron job fires off every minute, determines if any polling policies are in, in effect for any devices, and then runs collections on those devices. So if you want to do something faster than every minute, you have to have an other system that does that. And so that uh, that's all handled through, uh, through OP charts. So like all of uh, all of Automatic's commercial modules, OP charts and specifically the fast polling with OP charts builds on and expands NMIS 8's polling definitions. So the concept in NMIS 8 is is that you create polling definitions that make sense for the types of equipment you have and the the, the level of detail that you need for those that you need on a kind of a 24/7 365 basis. So everyday standard, how do I want to collect information for my devices? OP charts, fast polling, is all about the concept that something is happening on uh, one or more devices, maybe one or more interfaces, and you want to be able to get a, a very, very tight, um, fast, uh, detailed view of what's happening on that device, right? So it's, it's for fast polling, or, or some people call it real-time charting, and it's primarily for short-term troubleshooting. It's the something you're going to do for the next few hours until you can resolve the issue, or for the, the next week, maybe as far as a month. Generally speaking, it's not for really for use for long periods of time, uh, and not for a great number of devices. You can do it. Uh, we have clients who are using it now for uh, collecting on uh, high-speed trading platforms, uh, transactional systems where they really need to get very, very detailed data on a lot of devices, uh, but it does require a, a good amount of system resources because remember, uh, because we are agentless, we are actually reaching out from the NMIS server down to the device, executing uh, an SNMP get or an SNMP walk, uh, and then pulling that information back to, uh, to NMIS for display. Configuring fast polling in OP charts is a two-step process. Uh, in the first step, you define what's called a polling definition. A polling definition defines the OIDs that you're going to poll and the graphs that you're going to produce. So you have to know what things you want to actually collect on. Step number two is you then create a collector. A collector uses a polling definition, an OP charts polling definition, and applies it to a specific device or a specific device's interface. So let's take a look at what that looks like. And I'm just going to close out from NMIS and go over to OP Charts. Always good when you have a, a, a connection error during a demo. So I'm just going to refresh this screen, make sure this loads properly. All right. And so, again, you have polling definitions and collectors. So let's take a look at what a polling definition looks like. So a, a polling definition defines, again, the collection of OIDs. So it could be one single OID from a MIB, uh, but a, a collection, one or more OIDs, um, and then one or more charts. How do you want to display it? And so, for example, uh, I have here um, seven uh, example uh, polling definitions that ship with OP charts. So if you, if you install OP charts on your system, um, it'll, uh, the installer will try to install these for you. If they don't install the wiki page uh, that we reference in the uh, in the PowerPoint, uh, actually has the wiki page and has instructions for how to install these. Uh, these are all in JSON file format, so you can open the JSON files, you can create copies of them, uh, you can edit the JSON files, and you can re-import them as as new collection policies. So let's just take a look at what the Cisco CPU usage looks like. So you'll see that there are several sections here. Uh, there's properties, there's no content for properties, there's virtual properties, there's none in this definition. Uh, there are two fields here. So you can see, for example, that we're defining the name BusyPer. It's a gauge, uh, the name of the SNMP MIB, and then the OID itself, whether it's indexed or not, and whether we're gonna show it in the chart or not. 
So you can actually do uh, do math here um, with information you pull from fields. You can do math in the virtual fields section. So you could add multiple fields together and create something. So you might uh, you might pull multiple OIDs, add them all together, uh, do some math operation to it, and then have that number be the thing that's shown in the chart. And then at the bottom, you actually define the graph itself. So uh, rather than using a, a pre-built or predefined graph, you actually define the graph inside uh, uh, the polling definition. So you define the, the min and max, y-axis, the title of uh, the graph, um, and then also the, uh, uh, the y-axis title text as well. Let's take a look at one that's a little more complex. So let's go down to uh, interface errors and discards. Again, these seven ship with the system. They're designed specifically to be examples for you to look at. So we have some properties here. So we've got three different OIDs that are being collected. Uh, if high speed, if description, and if alias. See, there are four uh, fields that are defined. If in discards, if in errors, if out discards, and if out errors. And, uh, and note that these are, uh, while they're indexed, these are not being shown in the chart. There are four virtual fields. So these are calculations that are being done. So you're using if in discards divided by collector frequency. And then that is being shown in the chart. So the virtual fields area, the concept there again, is that that's for you to be able to take something that was collected from the fields or the properties, apply some kind of a mathematical operation to it, and then show that as the uh, um, kind of as the end goal. And then there is a graph. So y-axis title, interface errors and discards. And again, all four of these fields will show up in that in that graph. All right. Let's go back over to PowerPoint for a minute. So again, the polling definitions define what will be polled and how it will be presented. Currently, there is no GUI for editing. So the GUI I just showed you, uh, that's for viewing only. You can't edit, you can't create through that. Uh, we do have it on our uh, on our long-term goal list to have a GUI for putting these things together. Um, samples are located in the OMK install MSD polars.d folder. Um, they should be imported, as I said, during the install. You can uh, edit them at the command line, uh, re-import them in. Um, you can delete them if you want to, but they can. Uh, they, it's all done through. Uh, whoop, pardon me, through the uh, OPCharts CLI. Uh, at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see a couple links to uh, to our wiki that uh, go into um, how to uh, what a uh, polling definition is, and then how to uh, how to create and add a new polling definition to the system. So what is a collector then? So coming back here, let's go back to views. We were on polling definitions, now we're gonna to go to manage collectors. So a collector actually applies um, the polling definition to a specific device or a specific device's interface. And so for example, on this first row, you'll see that we're using the node BNE Lab CE1 we're applying the polling definition Cisco CPU usage. The SNMP index for both Cisco CPU usage and memory usage is zero. Notice that we are not using a decimal point. We're not applying a, a decimal in there. It's implied. We've applied a frequency to it, and we'll show you that interface in a moment. Uh, it is enabled. You can see the check mark. It will stop at a specific date and time. You can define that, and it shows when it was created. So I'm just going to click on the name. Here, it's an interactive link, and it will draw in for me. And like any other chart, I can uh, I can scrub into it, run in as much detail as I want. Uh, I can reset the zoom, and I can also change the uh, the period that I'm looking at. So like right now, I'm looking at 15 minutes. I can bring that down to one minute. The screen will refresh, and now I'm just looking at that uh, at this one minute window. Back to polling definitions. I've created polling definitions for this uh, BNE Lab uh, C1 uh, router device. So I'm collecting the Cisco CPU usage, the memory usage, and the uh, interface utilization high speed collectors on, 
on uh, index number two. Let me show you how I figured out which index that I wanted to collect on. So I'm going to open up Views, Nodes. Because this is a, a web browser, I can right-click and hit Open a New Tab. So I can open up another instance of OP Charts up here for you. So here's b and &E Lab CE1. And over on the left side, you'll see in the menu, there's uh, down the left-hand side here about halfway up, there's a node interface summary. And I can click on that. This will give me a full list of all of the interfaces of the device, admin status, operational status, utilization, bandwidth, physical address, last dates if it's being collected on. And over on the right-hand side, the if index number. So I want to collect on this PE1, which is Ethernet 1-0. I want to collect on that guy. And so I've, I've got this one now set up on index two for high speed collection. Let's create another one for low speed. BNE Lab, I start typing. It'll give me uh, what it thinks that I want to have. Select the polling definition. I want to have the low speed. Now you cannot collect um, on two of the exact same uh, SNMP indexes on the same device. So I couldn't enter in another high speed on uh, index two, because I'm already collecting on index two for high speed. But I can collect on low speed for index two. I want to collect every 15 seconds. Now the interface is hard coded for 15, 30, and 60. Um, it, you can do faster than 15 if you need to. You just can't do it through the interface. So what you do is you, uh, you create the collector, and then you go to the command line, export that collector at the command line, uh, modify the 15 seconds to whatever speed you need, and then re-import it. So I'm going to set 15 seconds. I want to be able to store two days worth of data. Now we're preset again to one day, two days, or seven. This again is all hard-coded in the system. This is not configurable. So I'm going to store two days worth of data. And by default, uh, OP Charts is going to give me 30 days of data. Is going to allow me to collect 30 days of data. Uh, I've got, there's a calendar control. You can store as much data as you want. Keep in mind, high-speed collection can eat up disk space very, very quickly. So you, you definitely want to keep an eye on, uh, on your storage. So I'm going to hit uh, Add. That'll come up. <coughs> We're going to give that a moment to go. Again, this is collecting every 15 seconds. So we probably won't have one data point yet, but we're going to get close to it. All right, we'll give that another moment. We'll come back to this. While we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and add one more. BNE Lab CE1 again. This time I want to do the interface errors and discards on that same index, index two, frequency every 15 seconds, max age every two days. They don't have to be the same, but I want to display these on a uh, on a custom dashboard. So I want them all to look uh, look similar and have the same kind of time periods. I'm going to hit add. Let's go back and take a look at that low speed one again. We should have some data in there by now. There we go. So this is our low speed collector now. So we've got some data here. What I want to do is I want to add this in. This is a great little graph, but I actually want to have, I want to see all the graphs at one time. I don't want to have to sit there at the polling collections uh, uh, dashboard and pick and open one and close one. So instead what I want to do is I want to add these to a dashboard. So I'm going to hit this down arrow, hit Add to Dashboard. Now, uh, I can add these to a new dashboard, and it'll create, uh, OPGRS will create a new dashboard and add this to it. But I've already created a dashboard, and I've added the first three pieces to it. So I've created the high-speed collector, so I'm going to add this to high-speed collector. So I'm going to hit Save. OPGRS is just going to throw that graph out. Oh, that's ugly. I don't like how that's thrown on there. So let's edit this. So I can now 
uh, drag these pieces around. This one is the high speed. Uh, let's uh, let's get the Cisco memory usage up here to the top. Um, let's go ahead and expand this out. I'm going to make that half size, and uh, you know what? I want to shrink this one down to half size and move it to the right. And I'm just going to go ahead and save that dashboard, and it's going to give me what the what the view is. So it gives me the save dashboard windows. I can't change the name of it, but I can change the description. I can also pick what other groups this dashboard is assigned to. I'm going to leave it in operators. And let's see what this looks like. Now these uh, these graphs function just like any other OP charts graph does. So for example, if I wanted to take the Cisco memory usage and the Cisco CPU usage and merge them together into just one graph, I could do that. Um, I could overlay uh, the two uh, B&E lab graphs as well. Uh, it just really just comes down to um, how much time I want to spend on putting this together. The nice thing at this point is, is that I can, uh, you know, I've created this dashboard for this one device. And now I can, I can share this amongst anybody that might need to use it, anybody that might need to see this information. Um, and by putting it into an operators group, you can see on the left-hand side, I have a, a nice little grouping of dashboards. And so, for example, um, my operators can now see this dashboard and they can switch between anything else that's in that operators group and be able to uh, take a look at uh, you know, additional settings, things that are happening. Uh, we've got a big storm coming up here in the, in the northeast. You can see coming into my direction here. And I can go back to that high-speed collector's dashboard. The concept here, again, is that you can quickly define uh, a collector. If you have your polling definitions built, you can quickly assign those to uh, uh, a device or an interface, start gathering information, take that information, throw it onto a dashboard, and then that dashboard can be immediately shared with any other members on your team. So if you want to put it up on the big screen on the wall, if you want to share it to, to other people, if you only want to uh, restrict, if you want to restrict who has access to it. So uh, uh, OPE Charts has a very defined, well-defined RBAC system behind it. So I can assign this to uh, a permissions group in that RBAC system, and then only users with that permissions group can see that information. You're probably wondering what we're going to do with that uh, that one interfaces errors and discards piece. Now that's been collecting for a little bit of time. Let's see how that's going. All right, so it's stocked at everything's everything's zeroed out on that. That's good. But again, I can even I can add this back to that dashboard, or I can create a new dashboard out of it. Um, whatever needs to be done, whatever's the kind of the the best approach, and however you want to lay that dashboard out. So some people uh, don't mind having dashboards that scroll. Uh, I prefer, from a usability standpoint, I want to see everything on my screen because, uh, uh, you know, as luck would have it, uh, if I have to scroll down to something, it's the thing that would be below the scroll line, below the edge of the screen, would be the thing that would be screaming and blinking red and needing attention and not being seen. And so when I design a dashboard, uh, I really try to put the dashboard together uh, where everything on that dashboard can fit in one screen and can be easily seen. So let's take a just quick look. Let's add this one onto that high-speed collectors. And I could add this to any other dashboard. Very, very simply. No problem at all. Throw this into edit mode again. And we're going to shrink that guy down. And let's shrink, uh, let's shrink memory usage down in size. And we'll move that guy up. And let's move that guy up. And let's just make this guy really, really wide. Why not? Now, generally speaking, um, when I size collectors that have the same time period, I try to make them the same uh, horizontal size. And the reason for that is, is that your time units will then line up top to bottom. Uh, you may have noticed that, uh, that Enmis does this really well. So if you look at the uh, device details widget in Enmus, your your time in all of these charts is the same horizontal amount of time. That way, as you're as you're looking through this, you can look vertically through this and try to line up events. So that 
spike and that spike line up. And although my line isn't straight, uh, trust me, they're at the same time. So you can absolutely do that in this example. Uh, I'm not going to that. I'm just stretching out that one piece to go wide. Let's uh, go ahead and save that dashboard again. And it'll redraw. So again, the, the time period at the bottom of the screen is the same time window that's in, uh, in each of these shorter pieces. All right. So uh, uh, just a few a few pieces here. Again, remember the SNMP index does not need a decimal point. If you enter a decimal point in there, you will receive an error in your op um, charts log file, which is located in the log directory. Um, so no decimal point in SNMP index. Um, you also can't do um, complex oids that have an index followed by uh, a trailing set of additional branches in the OID. So for example, if you had an index of uh, .1 and then you might have .3, .215, .258, for example. Um, the collector system is not smart enough to handle that. Uh, it, you know, the index has to be the last point in the OID uh, for the type of thing that you're collecting on at this point. Um, frequencies, again, uh, are predefined inside uh, OP charts. They are not editable at this point in the uh, uh, either in the GUI or in the uh, opcommon.nmis configuration file, although that is planned for uh, for some time in the future. So that concludes uh, today's uh, today's webinar. I appreciate uh, all of your attention today. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn off the recording now.